The film opens with a foreshadowing scene, showing the main character, Kitamura Tatsuo, on his bed with his wife lying on top of him. The high-pitched hum of cicadas resonates in the background. Tetsuo, who is seen audibly breathless and sweating, mysteriously discloses through first-person narration that his wife has actually passed away. The story then jumps 10 years prior to the current events. Tatsuo arrives at the location of a dumpy, tiny warehouse factory, where he was earlier recommended by a senior for a job. He is nervous about getting into the factory and contemplates whether he should enter or not. He is startled by Maria Tashiro, an elderly lady who suddenly appears behind him, asking if he needs any assistance. He informs her that he was sent there by someone named Kato. She connects the dots, realizing that he is the freelancer who was recommended to them as a sculptor. She asks him to come in, and he follows her. On getting into the factory, Tatsuo curiously scans around the surroundings while slowly trailing behind the elderly lady. His curiosity increases the moment he spots a catalog of unclothed lifelike female dolls. His face shows a mix of surprise and confusion, and Tashiro, noticing his facial reaction, politely explains he's looking at the bodies of love dolls. He seems even more confused, despite her explanation. Tashiro inquires if Kato didn't tell him the specific details of the nature of the job he is about to do. Tatsuo confesses that Kato never did. The elderly lady laughs for a second, then sarcastically tells Tatsuo that he has a nice senior. She further explains that the dolls originally used to be called Dutch wives, but people now call them love dolls. Tatsuo wonders why the dolls aren't filled with air, and this prompts Tashiro to clarify that the inflatable dolls were the old model. Tatsuo observes the dolls some more, until he sees black straps on the doll's groin areas. Tashiro returns and informs him that he will be responsible for attaching artificial female sex organs to the dolls, because the new models can only be sold as sex toys. Tashiro then guides Tatsuo to an office, where an elderly man peacefully dozes on a sofa. She rouses the man from sleep with a gentle pat on his head, addressing him by the pet name Kinkin. She informs him the new employee has arrived, which prompts the man, and has him readjusting to a sitting position on the sofa. After the man is fully awake, the lady introduces him to Tatsuo as Aikawa Kinji, the modeler in charge of making the dolls. She also introduces Tatsuo to Kinji, and playfully discloses that Tatsuo had been tricked into coming to the factory. The man chuckles and tells Tatsuo it's no big deal because that's pretty much how new people come to work at the factory. Tatsuo informs Kinji the only type of adult dolls he knows are the inflatable ones. Kinji brings out a model sample of an inflatable doll, and jokingly adds that the doll looks similar to Tashiro, subtly hinting that it's just as old as she is. Kinji offers Tatsuo a snack, and moves forward to show him the different types of dolls in his office. Firstly, he shows Tatsuo a doll made from latex rubber, which is a big step from the inflatable ones, but it's not durable and also hard to clean. He moves to the next doll, which is made of PVC, and explains it is more resistant to dirt and more durable. He also adds that the texture of the skin looks prettier than that of the latex. But the only problem is when he touches it, it doesn't feel perfect. Kinji explains further that he wants to make dolls that are closer to the feel of human skin, and that's how he got to produce dolls made out of silicone. It's taken him three years to develop this new doll, and requests Tatsuo come touch it. Tatsuo is impressed by the soft, squishy feel of the silicone doll, and confesses it's a huge upgrade from the previous dolls. However, Kinji confesses that the silicone doll isn't close to his goal, because he craves a perfect doll that looks and feels almost like a human with a soul. Tashiro expresses that the business now has a lot of competitors, and without a good modeler, they're going to start losing orders. She adds that Kinji, who is their only modeler, will need assistance due to his age. Afterward, she asks him if he would be willing to take on the job. Tatsuo pauses for a moment to gather his thoughts, while the two seniors wait anxiously to hear what his reply will be. Both their eyes widen in disbelief the moment Tatsuo agrees to work with them. Unable to contain their excitement, their faces glisten with smiles, and the seniors give each other a handshake. On the other hand, Tatsuo secretly feels sorry for them, because he doesn't have any interest in making a perfect doll, nor does he have any desire to bring the remote factory back to life. He only agreed to the job because he needs money. Over the next few days, Tatsuo assists Kinji in modeling the dolls for production. Kinji is impressed by Tatsuo's remarkable talent and aptitude in the doll production process. After the prototype is completed, it is shown to Kaoru Kibota, the owner of the factory, for assessment and appraisal. The smugness on their faces disappears the moment Kibota disapproves of the doll, and heavily criticizes it for its lack of authenticity. He asks for a redo, after condemning the overly large bust size of the doll, saying he wants a more realistic depiction of the body proportions. Tatsuo and Kinji go out later that night for a meal in a diner. In the middle of their discussion, Kinji asks him about the last time he touched a woman's breast. Tatsuo is caught off guard by the unexpected question, and he begins to stutter. He manages to confess as he hasn't done so in three years. Kinji is surprised by his answer, and then taunts him by saying he won't be able to make a doll that would impress the boss that way. Kinji jokes about the idea of using a real human body as an archetype to create their next doll. Tatsuo instead brings up a better idea of hiring a model to serve as a muse in making the doll. 
The only hurdle to that idea is that it is somewhat impolite to tell the models that they will be used for the production of adult toys. Kinji buys the idea and suggests that they lie to the models they are doctors, who want to use the sculpture to aid women with breast cancer. Tatsuo feels reluctant to go through with Kinji's suggestion, since it is risky, but Kinji tells him he's at the rope's end. He just has to make the perfect doll by all means. Tatsuo and Kinji go on with their plan and they dress like doctors while waiting for a model who accepts their job offer. The model arrives at the factory, and Tatsuo goes to welcome her. She politely introduces herself as Ozawa Sunoko, and Tatsuo is immediately captivated by her beauty. She has dark hair, which gracefully drapes over her shoulders and parts to one side behind her right ear. Her modest dressing surprisingly does little to diminish her natural beauty. As they converse, Sunoko struggles to maintain eye contact, which reveals that she is a somewhat shy lady. This adds a charming depth to her presence. Tatsuo invites her in and takes her to a room to undress. He goes to meet Kinji, and the two argue about who will be the one to apply the mold on her. They decide to settle their argument with a game of rock paper scissors, with Kinji ending up as the winner. However, when the time comes for Kinji to apply the mold on Sunoko, he chickens out and runs off, leaving Tatsuo to apply it on Sunoko instead. As Tatsuo is about to apply the mold on Sunoko, she unhooks her earring, hands it over to him, and he gently places it on the table. While applying the mold, the two try their best to avoid eye contact with each other. After the mold gets dried, Tatsuo tries to remove it himself. He doesn't want the situation to seem inappropriate, so he requests that she do it herself. As Sunoko removes the dried mold, she notices she is sweating profusely on her chest area. She gets a little embarrassed and hurries off to wear her clothes. Tatsuo finds himself apologizing for not having any showers in the factory. While Sunoko dresses, Kinji approaches Tatsuo inquiring if he touched Sunoko's chest with his bare hands. Tatsuo mentions he didn't, as it would be a crime. Kinji decides to go request from Sunoko if she will allow it, and despite Tatsuo's attempts to stop him from making such an absurd request, he still ends up going on to ask her permission. Kinji uses the guise of having a goal to create a perfect breast implant, asserting that the experience will help Tatsuo in having a clearer understanding of the shape. Tatsuo, feeling embarrassed, rushes to stop Kinji from saying any more nonsense. To their surprise, Sunoko agrees to Kinji's request, claiming she's game, as long as what she is doing helps people. Tatsuo nervously places both his hands on Sunoko's bosoms, then closes his eyes to enhance his sense of touch. Tatsuo silently describes the sensation as feeling like heaven on earth. It feels like a moment in the episode of Heidi, Clara stands. Once he has gotten a good feel of the shape, he leaves, embarrassed. Sunoko dresses up and bids them goodbye before leaving the factory. A few moments after she is gone, Tatsuo realizes Sunoko forgot her earring on his table. He quickly grabs it and chases after her, but takes the opposite direction she took. After frantically searching for her, he luckily finds her heading to the train station. He approaches her and hands over the earring, and she thanks him for it. He mentions the earrings must be quite expensive, and she confesses that they cost just 500 yen, which is even cheaper than the bus fare Tatsuo took in order to get to her. They both laugh over it for a while. She's just about to leave when Tatsuo, with a burst of courage, gently holds onto the hem of her coat, and confesses he fell in love with her at first sight. He then asks her earnestly to be his girlfriend. Tatsuo narrates to the viewers that it was the first time he ever told someone how he felt, and probably the last time too. Back at the factory, Kinji is more than surprised that Sunoko accepted to be Tatsuo's girlfriend. However, Tatsuo is worried about Sunoko finding out the truth about his occupation. She still believes he is in a medical-related profession. He's also worried about how she would feel if she found out the purpose of her visit wasn't to help cancer patients who lost their breasts, but to model for an adult product. Kinji promises to explain the situation to Sunoko himself. Days later, Tatsuo, Sunoko, and Kinji go out to have dinner at a diner. While they are all engaging in small talk, Tatsuo signals Kinji to get to the point of their dinner. Just as Kinji is about to confess to her the true nature of their job, Sunoko mentions that she initially wanted to turn down their job offer. She was worried about being cheated with the location being in a factory, instead of a research center. She then commends them for doing an amazing job, and adds that she's proud to help people in need. Due to her praises, Kinji loses the will to confess the truth to her, and out of disappointment, Tatsuo heads to the toilet. After Tatsuo leaves, Kinji asks Sunoko what she likes about Tatsuo. She admits she liked him the moment he touched her breasts in a clumsy manner. It gave the impression of him being a gentle person. She clarifies that it was the first time she's ever liked someone in such a weird way. Tatsuo later returns, and they continue their dinner. At the next doll inspection, the boss is impressed by the Sunoko-inspired doll, and approves it for marketing. Not long after, things start going well for Tatsuo. The love doll end up gaining massive popularity in the market, and he gets married to Sunoko. On their wedding night, they both promise to treat and watch over each other with the utmost care. They seal that promise with intimacy afterward. Tashiro starts getting worried about Tatsuo spending so much time at work, despite being a newly married man. She asks if Sunoko isn't upset, and he asserts that she isn't. 
Tashiro confesses that if it were her, she would have complained. Despite Tatsuo's late nights from work, Sonoko continues to be an understanding and caring wife. Even when he informs her he'll be coming home late in weeks to come, she assures him she'll be okay, encouraging him to work hard. Over the next few months, Tatsuo gets even more engrossed with work, and comes back home late and exhausted. His new situation greatly affects his romantic life with Sonoko, as he barely spends time with her. He even starts to fall asleep during lovemaking. One day, Tatsuo's boss proposes they change the raw materials of the love dolls from silicone to elastomer, since elastomers are known to be flexible and cost-effective. The only problem is that he is uncertain about how durable and recyclable it is. Tatsuo asks if silicone dolls aren't good anymore, and the boss admits that they are, but the factory needs to try something special, since other competitors are getting on the rise. Later on that day, Tatsuo receives a call from Tashiro informing him that Kinji has just passed away. On the day of Kinji's funeral, the gravel gray sky spits out a heavy rain pour, adding to the melancholy already present in the atmosphere. Tatsuo, alongside Sonoko and other workers of the factory, attend the funeral. Tashiro mourns for Kinji and blames herself for not having any of his family's contact to notify them. Sonoko overhears her and reassures Tatsuo that Kinji will still be happy, regardless of who shows up at his funeral. Weeks after, Tashiro introduces Tatsuo to Morizumi. He's a new employee hired by Mr. Kubota to assist him, in hopes of reducing the workload. Tatsuo politely welcomes Morizumi, and the duo immediately begin to work on the elastomer project together. Tatsuo struggles to get the desired squishiness and flexibility from the elastomers, but Tashiro encourages him by mentioning how he reminds her of the days when Kinji tried to transition from PVC to silicone. She further tries to uplift his spirits by sharing some sweets and patting his back. Tatsuo and Morizumi bond some more over drinks, which strengthens their partnership. Soon enough, they get closer to perfecting the elastomer dolls. Tatsuo decides to adjust the data in order to make the elastomer more flexible, and Morizumi offers to help record it in the database. While having dinner at their home, Sonoko notices Tatsuo beaming, and she asks him about it. He discloses he's finally gotten the new formula to create the new material he has been working on. The oblivious Sonoko still believes Tatsuo is making an improved quality for breast implants to help more people. Sonoko tries to discuss with him something that has been bothering her, but she later changes her mind, and lies about not remembering what she wanted to discuss. Tragedy strikes once again when Tatsuo arrives at the factory the next morning only to be informed by Mr. Kubota that Morizumi has betrayed them, and stolen the data for the production of the elastomer doll. It turns out Morizumi is a spy sent by a rival company, in order to get information and data about their latest product. Kibota is disappointed at himself for not running a background check on Morizumi before employing him, and instructs his workers to start running proper background checks on candidates. Kibota asks Tatuso if they can still go ahead to sell their elastomer dolls, and Tatsuo requests that he let him think about it for a while. Tatsuo is about to head to his home that night when he suddenly changes his mind and heads to a diner instead to grab a meal. This is a clear indication that Tatsuo now finds solace outside, rather than spending time with his wife. Upon returning home really late that night, he spots Sonoko sleeping on the sofa. He wakes her up to head to the bedroom. When she asks him if he would like to eat, he rejects her. She ignores him and asks again if she should help microwave the dish but he yells at her in response. After realizing he has hurt his wife's feelings, Tatsuo apologizes and confesses to her that things aren't going well at work. Sonoko apologizes to him and heads over to their room. As Tatsuo goes on to charge his phone, he sees a missed text message sent to him earlier from Sonoko, asking if he will be back on time, as she needs to discuss something important with him. The next night after work, Tatsuo heads over to the arcade to play the crane machine game. He notices a drunk woman named Hiroko, banging on the glass of the crane claw machine, frustrated about not being able to catch a doll. He heads over to her and tries to dissuade her from banging on the glass, but she ignores him and continues to do so. While struggling to get her away from the glass, the manager of the game store arrives, mistakes them for being a couple, and angrily kicks both of them out of. While outside, the lady apologizes to Tatsuo for getting him in trouble, and confesses that she has never won a doll from the game at least once. Tatsuo admits that he hasn't either. The lady then suggests that they both go to a karaoke bar as compensation. Tatsuo arrives home to find a letter from Sonoko informing him she has traveled to meet her dad, who's unwell. She states she'll be back home in a few days. The following night his residence telephone rings, and he sees it's a call from his mother-in-law. He asks how his father-in-law is faring, and is shocked to find out he is totally fine. His mother-in-law then inquires about Sonoko, mentioning that she has been trying to reach Sonoko's line, but it isn't reachable. Tatsuo realizes Sonoko lied to him about going to visit her father. However, he decides not to alarm his mother-in-law by not disclosing Sonoko has run away from home. When the call ends, he tries to contact Sonoko, but her line is unreachable. Some days after Sonoko's disappearance, Tatsuo and Hiroko hang out at the arcade to try their luck once more at winning a doll. 
In the process, they share a brief intimate moment. Coming out from the arcade, the lady admits her developing feelings for Tatsuo, but the two decide to part ways due to Tatsuo's married status. Later that night, the doorbell chimes, and Tatsuo opens it to surprisingly find Sonoko has come back in a drunken state. She's brought back home by a friend named Yashimura, who informs him he and Sonoko had a class reunion that night. Tatsuo thanks the man and helps Sonoko inside. After Sonoko gets sober, Tatsuo tries to ask about her whereabouts in the past few days, but she purposely tries to wave off the question. When he raises his voice, she tells him to wait for a week before she is able to talk about what's really going on with her. Sonoko goes to the room, leaving her phone behind. About a minute after she leaves, her phone chimes, and a new message from Yashimura pops up, asking they can meet again. Tatsuo reads the message, but decides not to think too much about it. Tatsuo becomes a shadow of himself. He is seen sobbing at work, and throwing away his work materials in a fit of anger and frustration. After a week has elapsed, Tatsuo and Sonoko finally sit down to have their discussion. Sonoko starts by asking him about the ideal type of marriage he had envisioned. He mentions he wanted a cheerful and warm marriage. Sonoko replies she envisioned a talkative married couple, who share complete honesty with each other. With intent glistering in her eyes, Sonoko asks if there are any secrets he is keeping from her. Tatsuo is thrown off guard by her question, and he struggles to find an answer. She repeats the question, and he finally comes clean about the nature of his job. Sonoko surprises Tatsuo by saying she wouldn't look down on him, regardless of the kind of job he does. Sonoko drops another missile by hinting he isn't yet completely honest with her, and there is still something he's holding back. Feeling pressured and cornered, Tatsuo confesses he has cheated on her one time during the course of their marriage. He apologizes for his actions, but Sonoko tells him not to apologize, because she has also once cheated on him. Tatsuo can't believe his ears. He immediately forgets about his own affair, and judges her for hers, until she reminds him that he also cheated. She apologizes, and admits that she only did it because she felt alone in their marriage. Things get worse Tatsuo. Sunoko wants to get a divorce and live happily alone. Tatsuo is lost for words, as everything seems to be happening so fast. Early the next morning, Tatsuo catches Sonoko trying to sneak out of the house. She does this after dropping a divorce file on the table. It immediately dawns on him that she is indeed serious about wanting a divorce. Sonoko hands over the divorce papers and informs him of her plans to be away for two days. When she returns, they can go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to finalize their divorce. As Sonoko is about to leave, Tatsuo grabs her arm and pleads with her to talk things through with him. He insists she can't leave until she unloads thoughts he knows she's been holding back. It is at this point Sonoko reveals battling cancer. This explains why she left home initially. She was at the hospital for checkups, and now she has a surgery to meet up with. The news breaks Tatsuo's heart in pieces, and hot tears well up in his eyes, threatening to spill over. His knees become soft as marshmallows and eventually give way, causing him to sit down on the edge of his sofa. His words break up, and he stutters out why he was kept in the dark. She clarifies she tried to tell him several times, but he wasn't always available. At the hospital, Sonoko tries to check in at the counter, and denies having a family when being asked about one. The receptionist informs her there is a name written in the spouse column of her form, but Sonoko clarifies that she is getting a divorce. Tatsuo suddenly arrives and mentions they aren't getting a divorce anymore. On getting to Sonoko's room, she reveals to him she has stage 2 gastric cancer, and two-thirds of her stomach has to be removed. Back at the factory, Tatsuo begins to have a mental breakdown at work. He reminisces about the conversation he had with the late Kinji. Kinji confided in him about how his business investment money got stolen by his business partner. Kinji's wife and daughter ran away afterward, and he went to jail. In jail, he met their current boss, who was a police officer back then, and the two decided to start the sex doll business together. Later on, the boss inquires from Tatsuo about his progress report on getting the ideal elastomer doll, and Tatsuo reports he is close to getting the ideal data. He also gives reasons why he still isn't sure the elastomers will be better than the silicone. The boss asks if he has other options in case the elastomer project fails, and Tatsuo gives him the assurance that he will think about it. Tatsuo's affection for Sonoko begins to return, and he frequently visits her in the hospital, even during work hours. There, he confesses to her that he doesn't want to be apart from her, nor does he wants to get a divorce. Sonoko admits that the reason she asked for a divorce is because she can't give him children anymore. She wanted him to go and be with a woman who could. Tatsuo lets her know that he didn't get married to her because he wanted kids, but because he wanted to be with her. Tatsuo struggles to contain the tears flowing freely from his eyes, as he expresses his regret for how unfairly he has neglected Sonoko since he got married to her. Tatsuo reports back to Kubota, informing him he has decided to continue using silicone rather than elastomers in making the dolls. Kubota warns him about their competitors, and the changes in customers' preferences. He also asks Tatsuo if he's up for it, and Tatsuo assures him he is willing to take his chances, as he truly believes in silicone dolls. Thankfully, Kubota agrees with him and encourages him to continue his hard work. 
Tatsuo and Sonoko are having a romantic lunch at Birds Hill Park one day when a dog suddenly runs under the bench where they are sitting. Sonoko is immediately captivated by the dog's fluffy fur, and she tries to pet it. The owners of the dog, an elderly couple, call out its name, Yoko. They realize the dog is with the young couple, and they approach them. The elderly woman then talks about how the cherry blossom tree at the park produces beautiful flowers every spring, even though the branches get broken by drunken tree watchers, causing the trees to wither. The older couple bids the younger ones a hearty goodbye, and they part ways. Spring season finally comes and Sonoko's condition worsens, despite her treatment. The doctor informs Tatsuo that it has become terminal, but he can help Sonoko by reducing the level of her pain. Tatsuo heads back home, losing himself to his thoughts. Sonoko enters with a strange request to make a doll out of her body. Tatsuo doesn't understand what she means, and she further explains she would love to help him create the perfect doll. The goal is to use the archetype of her body as a model for creating the doll, which also entails her making love to him in the process. The request is rather odd, but Tatsuo agrees to it. The couple begin to make love every day, while Tatsuo takes sketches and measurements of her body parts for the doll. As the doll gets closer to completion, Tatsuo notices Sonoko is gradually getting thinner and more frail. Tatsuo gets scared and tries to stop their lovemaking sessions, but Sonoko begs him not to stop until his perfect doll is complete. One morning, after a round of lovemaking, Tatsuo and Sonoko hold hands and lay in bed. Sonoko reminds him of the time they went to the Birds Hill Park, and adds there must be cicadas there at the moment. Tatsuo promises her they'll go see the cherry blossoms the next spring. Tatsuo reminds her of the dog they saw at the park, alongside the old couple. He asks if she remembers its name, and she tells him it's a Pomeranian dog. Tatsuo clarifies he isn't looking for dog's breed, but rather its name. The name is at the tip of his tongue, but he can't seem to remember it. Sonoko heaves, then with sadness in her voice, she tells him that not everything needs to be remembered. Her reason being, if he has the ability to remember everything, he'll also have sad memories. Tatsuo gets emotionally moved by her words and begins to kiss her, which eventually leads to another round of intimacy. This, however, will be their last. They both profess their love for each other, and it's their last exchange, because Sonoko succumbs to her illness and passes away on top of Tetsuo. This brings us back to the opening scene of the movie. As Tatsuo continues to hold on to his wife, he narrates he is finding it hard to let go of her. If he lets her go, he will never be able to get inside her body ever again. He admits nothing stays forever, but the things he has lost now will stay lost forever. The next morning, Tatsuo continuously drowns himself in grief, and the world around him seems to crumble. The air of silence and the dirty dishes in the sink create a hollow emptiness that lingers around his home. Tatsuo loses the will to live, and tries to drown in his washing machine. Just as he is about to completely drown, he fights for his life and survives. He rushes to his room and grabs a sketchbook containing sketches of Sonoko. Memories of his past moments spent with Sonoko steadily flood in his brain, and he uses that as a motivation in creating a silicone doll which ends up being a complete replica of Sonoko. After the doll is complete, he lays it on his bed and goes on to make love to it. He momentarily hallucinates the doll as Sonoko, and this fuels his desire until reality hits. He bursts out in tears, finally remembering the name of the dog. It's Yoko, he tells the doll. Sometime later, Tatsuo unveils the doll to Kubota and Toshiro, and they both have an emotional moment looking at it. Kubota praises the doll for looking like there is indeed a soul in it. It's just as Kenji envisioned. Toshiro, amidst tears, mentions it feels as if Sonoko has come back to life once again. Tatsuo makes a request that the doll be named Hiragana. It's not Sonoko, but it still feels like Sonoko to him. As a reward for working so hard in creating the doll, Kubota grants Tatsuo's request, and orders all the members of his staff to sell the doll at the highest price ever, with a limit of 100 units. He adds that anyone who doesn't understand the value of the doll shouldn't have the right to call themselves their customer. The workers at the factory, moved by Kubota's words and Tatsuo's hard work, make a round of applause. The Sonoko replica doll attracts customers, and its 100 units sell out in less than three minutes. One day, the police stop by the factory to arrest Kubota for crimes of creating seamless sex dolls that look completely real. Kibota, however, doesn't seem to be moved by the police actions, and voluntarily agrees to go along with them. Tatsuo gets worried about him, but Kibota assures him he will be back in three days. He has been arrested several times in past years for making sex dolls, and he always finds a way out. True to his words, Kibota gets released after a couple of days, and all staff members go out to have a staff meal, sponsored by him. A staff of the factory informs them the Sunoko doll has become the best-selling adult toy ever. They all get excited, but Kubota tells them they need to create a new Sunoko doll that won't get him arrested. They all laugh about it, and Tatsuo says in that case, he will give it another name. Toshiro suggests they name the next doll after her, and everyone begins laughing. Later on is karaoke. Tatsuo walks along the beach when he spots a group of young karate students arguing about an object they found on the beach. He approaches them and asks what's going on. 
The innocent students inform him they found something that looks like a life preserver. Tatsuo takes a closer look, and realizes it's actually an inflatable model of a love doll. He explains to them what the love doll is used for, and the young boys joke about it until they are later chased away by their coach. Tatsuo takes the love doll with him. Thoughts of his late wife envelop his mind as he walks further down the beach. 